Hello students, welcome back to the lecture series of software engineering course. Today I'll cover one of the another SDLC model that is evolutionary development model. So let's start. Uh, evolutionary model basically uh, is the combination of incremental and iterative models. So incremental is basically when the number of stages increase uh, amount, number of stages are in increasing amount, then it is called incremental. Iterative actually means when uh, it involves the iteration of processes. So that's why evolutionary actually considers to be the combination of these two models. And as I have discussed uh, prototype and spiral model, so prototype and spiral model are also a kind of evolutionary model. And this evolutionary development model basically divides the development life cycle into smaller incremental waterfall models so that user can be able to get access of a product at the end of each cycle. So basically evolutionary model breaking down the tasks into smaller chunks, prioritize those tasks and then deliver it to the customer one by one. So basically it delivers in the form of stages. For example, the software of software that is version 1 This is version 2, so in this way it actually delivers the final product in terms of these number of stages and each stage actually serves, the, serves to identify the conceptual solution for the next stage. And in this version of the software, every time there is an uh, a, there is a release of versions of the software to the customer until the whole software is delivered to the customer. That's why we called it as the evolutionary development model because every time the software product get evolved with some newer version. Uh, the diagrammatic representation states that. Evolutionary development model starts with some initial requirements and then on the basis of those initial requirements, it constructs the model. This model basically has design, coding and testing phases. So in this model, basically these three phases are involved in it. Then further it goes to uh, review by the customers. And then we need to check whether the customers accepted it or not. If the customer accepted it, then we actually baseline the product. When it is not accepted by the customer, then we define the models by accommodating customer's feedback as their new requirements. So this is basically the evolutionary model. So I hope you understand what actually the evolutionary development model is. Now, I will explain when to use this evolutionary model. So, uh, uh, this evolutionary development model can be suitable for those large projects which can be easily divided into modules or smaller uh, uh, sections. Second, when customers want to start with some core features or core modules of the software system. And thirdly, it is well suited for object-oriented software uh, softwares be uh, because this model can easily divide it 
into the units in terms of objects. Next, I need to find. Uh, I need to tell you what are the advantages of evolutionary development model. So, uh, one of the advantage of evolutionary development model is that users can be easily experienced to the partially developed software as uh, the versions of the software is actually released. Second, it reduces errors because the core features or the core modules are tested thoroughly or uh, tested with the release of the uh, uh, with the release of the uh, versions. What are the disadvantages of evolutionary development model? So only one disadvantage of evolutionary development model is because every time it is not possible, the uh, large problem can be divided into versions of the software. So in that case, evolutionary model won't be able to use. I am ending over here. Hope you understand uh, today's topic on evolutionary development model. Again, if you do have any kind of query, you may write in the comment box. I will definitely answer. Thank you students. Keep watching and listen.